Let's now solve this cool trapezoid problem from the 2022 AMT 10 and 12A. A isosceles trapezoid ABCD has parallel sides AD and BC with BC less than AD. So let's draw what this will look like. BC is less than AD. So we have AD on top. Oh, and then we can have something like B here. And then maybe C is here. We have AD and then BC will be parallel, so something like that. And the key thing to note here is it's an isosceles trapezoid. And the main advantage of it being an isosceles trapezoid is we know both of these corresponding sides are equal on both sides. So let's label this A, B, C, D. Equal, equal. And we're given that PA equals 1. PB is 2, PC is 3, and PD is 4. Find BC over AD. Okay, so this seems pretty tricky because we've got a bunch of lengths and we don't really know how to operate from here. Well, first thing, let's actually shift this point just a little bit because otherwise I might get confusing with the diagram later, the rest of the problem. So this is our point P in the center. And the, we have to somehow try to use this information of the lengths to find what these ratio of the side lengths are. And the key thing here is we're only looking for a ratio. We're not looking for, we're not looking for the side lengths, AD and BC. Just the ratio is all we need. So the key thing here is we've got these kind of random diagonal things. So we're going to want to let them drop the perpendiculars. Let's say this perpendicular purple one has length A, and then let's say this part is X. Now let's say that this part is Y. So this is, this is X and this is Y. Now let's do something similar. Let's drop the altitude over here. Let's use this color. We have here, this, let's call this length B, the perpendicular length. We're dropping the altitudes. And then let's call this length, let's say L and, and M. So why do we drop altitudes? Well, now we can instead of having this giant length here, we have a right triangle where we can now use Pythag theorem. So with Pythag theorem, we have, for this first triangle, we have L squared plus B squared is one. L squared plus B squared equals one. For the second triangle, we have B squared plus M squared equals four squared. So M squared plus B squared equals four squared, 16. For this triangle over here, we have A squared plus X squared is four. And for the triangle over here, we have A squared plus Y squared is nine. Okay, that's cool. So, oh, do you notice anything about these equations? It looks like these equations, they look very, very similar, don't they? I mean, L squared plus B squared is 1. M squared plus B squared is 16. What's the only thing different about those equations? M squared, L squared. Oh, so that means that what we can do is, let's call this equation right here, 1, and this one, 2. We can subtract equation 1 from equation 2. So equation 2, m squared plus b squared, minus equation 1, l squared plus b squared. That's 16 minus 1, 15. And on the left-hand side, we have m squared minus l squared, because the b squareds will cancel. Similarly, we can do a squared plus y squared equals 9, minus a squared plus x squared is 4. We do y squared minus x squared is 5. Okay, so first of all, we're not going to be able to solve for every variable. There's way too many variables. We've literally got six variables in this diagram. There's no way we can solve for every one with just four equations, right? So let's keep our eye on the ball, what we're actually trying to find. BC over AD. BC is x plus y. 
80 is L plus M. X plus Y over L plus M. Hmm. Oh, difference of squares. Y squared minus X squared is X plus Y times Y minus X. Or Y plus X times Y minus X. And I'm just writing it this way. It's 5. And similarly, we have M minus L times M plus L, and I'll just write it as L plus M, equals 15. Cool, so what if we're looking for X plus Y divided by L plus M, right? So what happens if we just maybe divide this equation by this equation? Let's do that. What would we get? We would get X plus Y, Y minus X over M, L plus M, and then m minus l, right? And this is 5 over 15, a third. Cool. Oh, but we've got this extra term here, y minus x, m minus l. So now are we stuck? Do we just give up? Or is there something else we can do? The key here thing is, when you're stuck, reread the problem for information you haven't yet used. In this case, we haven't used the fact that it's an isosceles trapezoid. That's something you probably should do given that they literally give that information to us in the problem. I saw this trapezoid. Well, again, this is kind of like a hanging leg in midair. So let's let's drop it the height, the full height this time. Let's make it a little more vibrant. Let's call it H. The full height is H. So by Pythagorean theorem, we have A, B squared equal to H squared plus this part squared. So h squared plus whatever this part is. Well, what is that part? Because this whole thing is L and this part is X, this difference is just L minus X. So h squared plus L minus X squared. Okay, now what about CD squared? Well, CD squared equal to, again, we can drop an altitude. So be h the same height because they're all heights of the trapezoid and this part will be m minus y right because this part this is here is y they're equal and this part will be the difference m minus l i'm m minus y so a squared plus m minus y squared equals cd squared by the pythagorean theorem oh but we know it's isosceles trapezoid so these two quantities are equal so that means that, or yeah, so that means that we have that L minus X squared is M minus Y squared. Why? Because, well, L minus X, M, H squared will cancel. And if you take the square root, we get L minus X equals plus or minus M minus Y. And we can actually ignore the minus case because Clearly, L is more than X, and M is more than Y in our diagram. And the other possibilities where the other possibilities where M could be less or something like that would not work in our case. So just plus, so M minus Y itself. And let's actually, what are we looking for? Well, we, we're trying to figure out how to deal with this extra part here. Y minus X over M minus L. Could this maybe, maybe give us some hindsight into how to achieve that? Y minus X. Okay, we've got a Y term here, an X term here. Let's move the Y to the other side. And let's move this L term to the other side. Y minus X equals M minus L. Y minus X equals M minus L. Therefore, these terms are equal. Isn't that cool? So, cancel, cancel. Our answer is just x plus y over l plus m, a third, which is b. A great problem, let's summarize. Basically, we dropped the altitude, we used Pythagorean theorem four times, and then we subtracted the equations to get these quantities over here. You then factor with difference of squares, and then see the isosceles trapezoid trick, and then you cancel, cancel, a third is left. Cool problem. And now we're going to move on to another problem from number 24. We'll explore this cool combo one here.